due to no ineptitude and from a well ongoingly researched and very conscious, very diligent effort, I am a 40 year old virgin. My parents gave this to me when I was 16. They didn't define its purpose clearly. They just said, uh, save it, and uh, here's a reminder. So I, I don't want to parse the, this, what the symbolism is. Um, so because of that, I get to say a few things. I have pondered all my life what it takes for a marriage to be a success. And by that, I mean that it becomes happily ever after for the married couple and for any children. Uh, the reason I pondered this is because given the massive failure rate I think it's worth pondering. I don't like to do things in the same way that is proven to fail. So recently I have been asking myself more and more, what defines a marriage? That the answer is forever or Put more succinctly, in our human life, it means to the death. It's, I mean, to death do us part. We're in this to the death. And God said in the Bible that he hates divorce. Now, somewhere along the line, a bunch of church people, formerly myself included, still believing Jesus, of course, a bunch of church people decided that when God said that he hates divorce, that somehow that's supposed to mean that we're supposed to hate divorced people. Now, we would never say that, but come on, that's what we've been acting like. If you want to talk about hating divorced people, it's usually it's the couple that's divorced that struggle with hatred for each other and maybe for themselves, because marriage is to the death. And once that promise to the death is broken, part of us dies. We wish we were dead. I think it's probably a lot like what God told Adam, the day you eat of it, you will die, but it wasn't the death they were thinking. It was something else, still quite terrible. <clears throat> so what defines a marriage? Is it government? If, if we look at government defining a marriage, then who defined Adam and Eve's marriage? And what precedent in the Bible would tell us that Adam and Eve had no wedding ceremony because there was no one there to wed them, but everyone else must have one? The Bible never talks that way. Where is the ceremony for a wedding defined in the Bible? It's not. Now, Leviticus gives many rules for the ceremonies of sacrifice in God's temple. God could have given a marriage ceremony, but he didn't. As far as marriage ceremonies go, they're, they're usually about identifying inheritance Isaac was married, uh, conducted by Abraham, his father, in his mother Sarah's tent. They were uh, nomadic warlords. In a sense, Abraham was the local king uh, with a roaming nation of about 400. And all of Abraham's servants needed to know who the heir would be. And by having a ceremony, everyone knows that. It wasn't Ishmael, who was somewhere else. Uh, nearby. Um, for Jacob, 
marriage was a tool of his uncle Laban to make him a working slave for 20 years. It was seven, then seven, and he kept going on, and it was 20 years before he finally left. And, and marriage was a means of trickery. Okay, so do we need a license, a certificate for marriage? The Bible never prescribes a certificate for marriage. The only certificate in the Bible pertaining to marriage is a certificate of divorce. Now, think about that from the angel's perspective. If, if you're a heavenly being and, and you've never been human, you're trying to understand earth, and you know God's word, angels, demons, they know God's word very well, as we know with Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. If you see humanity through God's word, and the only certificate relating to marriage is a certificate for divorce, and all these people are getting married with all these supposed marriage certificates, what's going to be your first impression if you're an angel or a demon looking at all these people, that they're inviting divorce. And I'll tell you, certainly demons, such as happened with Job, are going to the Lord God and arguing. They might not, they might be wrong, they might be dismissed, but they'd love to argue before God. They have a certificate for marriage. You didn't say that. So they want divorce, and I'm entitled to attack their marriage. You better believe the accusers are claiming that before God's throne. That doesn't mean that I wouldn't get a certificate of marriage, but I know what's going on. I might have to call the blood of Jesus down over any certificate like that. Make the angels clear on that. Um, okay, bottom line, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm, not, a, um, I'm not a chameleon. I'm not, I'm not hiding something. I believe, I've, I've come to believe in the past few days... After over 20 years of research, after deep and heavy prayer, that doesn't mean I'm right, but it's you got to do this, and after counsel with two separate Christians, uh, you know, strong Christians uh, in, in, in different ways and manners, I have come to the conclusion that the wedding ceremony, which causes someone to be married is the consummation, if I can use big words uh, to help certain years. Um, I, I, that's, that's a covenant. Um, it, it, interestingly, I, I, I always say, to, to try to make things simple in, in, in teaching, whatever, I, people say, what's a covenant? What's a different covenant? I promise. Well, a covenant is a promise with a dance and a gift. Um, certainly the consummation of a union includes a dance and a gift. Um, you know, by, by that definition anyway. You, you look at the other, you know, the, the communion cup. It's, it, there's a little dance, you know, we're gonna serve each other this thing and then we're gonna get a gift, you, you, you take food, you know. So it's a dance and a gift. Um, I always ask myself when someone, when, 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 when people decide before God that they, they're ready to get married, what's wrong with eloping? Uh, why would anyone frown upon that? Maybe nobody does. Maybe that everyone in the world thinks that everyone should elope. Got me fooled. A lot of people think eloping is not good, but Maybe they do, I don't know, but let's say that some people don't like eloping, um, where people just run off by themselves and secretly get married. Is there anything wrong with that? What business of that is uh, anyone else's? What business of that is ours if certain people, if a, if a couple decides to get married? So the, the issue is... I'm not going to derive my theology from Hollywood, but let's just, to illustrate the point, let's go to the movie Avatar. Um, the two of them walk off uh, to the, uh, the whatever 
fancy tree. And, um, and then she says, we are mated for life. Um, what if that's how it happens in God's eyes? That's how it happened for Adam and Eve. Um, I think the issue is to make sure that we all know how serious marriage is. It, the reason I'm not married, as I said, is not due to any ineptitude. It's actually due to a lot of hard work and ongoing research and great effort on my part. I've seen too many failures. Soapbox moment. I've been a one-on-one -on -one tutor in various subjects in two hemispheres for 25 years, about half and half in America and in East Asia. I've seen what happens in households. I've seen parents deal with their children, rich, poor, happy, sad, and the permutations of each, different cultures, different languages. I've seen what works and what doesn't. And usually the parents that are failing are the ones who think that they know what they're doing. Um, the, uh, I mean, I'm not going to justify myself. I'll, 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 I'll look at my track record and the things that I've done some other time. As I look at these families, I see what's happening in the marriages. I, I, I've seen it. I've seen the marriages in action. In going into people's homes, dealing with their children, seeing how children are different because of the parents, seeing the interaction with the parents and the kids and the parents with each other. And I've gotten a look not just into raising children, but into how, how married couples interact. Um, it doesn't make me any grand expert, but for my senior project in psychology, I had to interview three married couples. Um, one of them was a two-year married couple from some, some high school, from some, some college kids I'd known since they were in junior high. And the other was a couple that was married 10 years and then a couple that was married 50 years. And I've continued to ask people and to seek out what happens in happy marriage. And I don't see premarital counseling making a difference one way or another. And I don't see these great big grandiose theatrical wedding ceremonies making a big difference one way or another. A, a Taiwanese lady, a very strong Christian who believes in prophecy, just the other day said, everybody's a ham, you know, an actor. Everybody wants to ham it up. That's why everyone's getting married, especially these people that love marriages. It's this massive performance, all this money into the wedding, and then ugh, they get locked into this mess. And the best I can see from my objective standpoint Having been faithful to the Lord's command in this for my part on the path the Lord has me on, having been obedient and not disobedient, not disobedient with massive and extra experience, but from my perspective of obedience and listening to wise counsel, I see that what makes the marriages last is that the people are dedicated to do whatever it takes. And they're not afraid to break the mold. The 50-year-old the, the married couple, the, 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 the wife just couldn't handle being at his church anymore. So she went to another church that was kind of considered boring, and she sang in the choir. And they were just incredibly happy. A lot of people would say, you must go to a church together. And that's a churchianity discussion I'll get into. Well, I've already gotten into, so maybe I won't have to get into it again. I'll probably get into it again. Um, most of us rush into relationships. People start shacking up, and they don't know what they're getting into, whether they're just uh, <clears throat> shacking up or whether they're rushing into a marriage so that they can do it legally 
as, as Christians wanting to keep the pastor and mom and dad happy. Um, all these failed marriages I've ever seen included people that didn't know what it means to make up your mind. It, there are people that didn't make up their minds or they thought that because they feel butterflies that it means that they're going to want to take the garbage out in 10 years. Or they didn't really know how hard it would be and they wouldn't listen to wisdom, learning through the word rather than through the rod. So I didn't want part of it. Uh, in some sense, for my part, this is going to sound arrogant, but it would insult the dictionary if I didn't say this. In some sense, in some sense, I'm an expert in marriage because I'm not divorced. Now that puts me ahead of 50% of those that are married. Now, as for those that shack up that are not married, it puts me ahead of more than 50% of them. I've never been in a relationship. How's that? So, um, being the uh, successful 40-year-old virgin that I am, I can have this opinion as a Bible-believing Christian who believes that Jesus is too big for the box people want to put him in on Sunday morning, who believes that the whole earth should be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, a Christian that's done my 90-some thousand-word theology book, which you can buy, want to review it, have at it. I've done my Bible translation of the book of Revelation, want to review it, have at it. They're free. If you go to Smashwords, um, I'm not sleeping around. I don't have any <sighs> Ravi relationships. I have no motive honest or dishonest in having this opinion that marriage is, is, is created, the wedding in God's and heaven's eyes, and should be ours, happens at the consummation only. I'm supposed to add something else, and this is going to make people mad. I, I really have no interest in adding this right now. <clears throat> we know, it, it, it really looks like, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bank on it. I'm, I'm not going to say, thus says the Lord. But I'm going to call it a certainty. If I'm wrong about this, I'm... I'm on record as being wrong. I believe this. We know who one of the two witnesses is of Revelation chapter 11, alive on earth, walking around. <clears throat> and the other witness hasn't shown up. And so, I am declaring myself to be that second witness because I can. And the first witness and I have been growing and walking in that power and we've been having a lot of fun with you over the last 10, 11, 12 years. More on that another time. Game on.